bringing hope to many around the globe, transforming lives into legacies. Live in Word with Pastor Mensah Otobiel. And now, today's Word. As you know, uh, I've been teaching on from Luke chapter 15, and we've been talking about lost and found. And uh, today is part number four, and uh, we are just concluding uh, the lost son. So I did part A of the lost son last week, and so we're looking at part B of the lost son. Now, if you look at the three parables that Jesus spoke uh, in Luke chapter 15, he talked about the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son. The lost sheep belonged to to the shepherd. The lost coin belonged to the woman. The lost son also belonged to his father, but but he had something else. He didn't just belong to the father. He was born of the father. The sheep was not born by the shepherd. The, The coin was not born by the woman, but this guy was born by the father. He had a very special relationship with the Father. And that's why I believe this parable is speaking to the life of believers who fall away from their faith and return home. And the last time we met this guy, he had gone his merry way and uh, eventually found himself in a lot of trouble. He spent everything that he had and then uh, he was assigned to go and feed pigs. And, uh, and the passage says that uh, even whilst he was feeding the pigs, he wanted food or he wanted to eat the food of the pigs. Now for a Jew to feed pigs, that's an abomination in the first place. But to try to eat the food of the pigs, I don't know what, how, what is greater than abomination. That's a super abomination. Uh, and, and, and the passage says that Although he wanted to eat the food of the pigs, no one gave him anything. In other words, he couldn't even eat the food of the pigs. The owners of the pigs felt that the pigs were more important to him, to them than than him. Because the pigs will be fed to be sold and they will fetch a price. And so they had value. Their food was to fatten them. And this guy in the estimation, had no value. A great son from a great family reduced to a place below pigs. Couldn't eat the food of pigs because they thought the value of the pig was higher than the son of a noble man. It just shows the extent to which Satan can bring a child of God to a place where even the unbelievers don't consider you worthy because you have gone far below. So what do you do when you find yourself in this situation? So let's pick the story back in Luke chapter 15 and verse 17 to 21. And it says, but when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, His father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and in your sight. And I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. So what do you do when you have reached rock bottom? There are some who will keep going and going and going probably move to another town and hope that somehow they will find a way. It's like people who get lost and and still keep driving and hoping that they will find their way. There are others who will stop 
and settle and say, well, life is bad. I'm, I'm just going to stay here. I think this is all that I have. And then there are those who will try to go back to where they used to be. And that is the option that this gentleman took. He decided to go back to the father. So let's look at the process of going back to the father. There are four things he did in order to go back to the father. The first one is realization. The passage says he came to himself. He came to himself. That means that he was beside himself all this time. He came to himself. He took charge of his life. He accepted the reality of his life. He stopped making excuses. Stopped lying to himself. He faced reality. He looked himself in the mirror and told himself the truth. The problem many times with us is when things go bad. Either our Christian life goes bad and we are now back into the world or we are backsliding. We don't face reality. And there are people who still think they are doing well when they are not doing well. There are people who are down who still think they are up. They never face reality. But this gentleman faced reality. And if you are here struggling with your Christian life, if you want to get back to God and you want to get back to the place of relationship and intimacy you had with God, you're going to start with facing reality. That's what he did. He faced reality. Because if you don't start facing reality, you're going to lie to yourself for a very, very long time. Apart from our Christian life, there are many areas where we need to face reality. Sometimes couples need to face reality that there is problem in their marriage. Instead of saying there is nothing, they have to understand there is a problem. Maybe you are in a situation where your finances are, are going bad and, and now you're blaming witches and you're blaming everything and now you're blaming the almighty Russia and Ukraine war. But you have to face reality. You have to face reality. Because until you face reality, you are living a lie. And nobody can have recovery and restoration when they live in a lie and tell themselves a lie. I must admit that telling yourself a lie sometimes is very nice. Because it encourages you. But when you are feeding, eating with pigs, or you are living with pigs, you don't need encouragement to live more with pigs. You need to get out. And it starts by facing reality. But that's not all he did. The second step he did was he reasoned with himself. He spoke to himself. He reasoned. He started thinking. And he said, wow. I remember my father's house and even the slaves, the servants, they had bread to eat and they had bread to spare. Common sense, reason. And that's what he did. He remembered what life was. And then he asked himself the all important question. If this is how life was in my father's house. What am I doing here? What am I doing here? Why, why am I allowing this thing to overtake me? Why am I allowing this thing to destroy my marriage? Why am I allowing this thing to destroy my Christian life? Why? Why do I sit here and allow the situation to destroy me? Reason. Because if you don't reason and you don't ask the tough questions of yourself... You can't get out from the pigsty. You know, for many of us, when we're in trouble, in Ghana, we blame the witches and wizards and demonic attacks, spiritual attacks. I can guarantee you most of your problem, about 99.9 .9 is not a spiritual attack. It's a personal attack you have given to yourself. 
It's based on choices, based on mistakes. It's based on bad choices you're making. And if you keep blaming the witch, you will never reason to solve the problem. So we stop blaming, we face reality, and we start to think. Why am I sitting here? Why have I allowed this to happen to me? Why do I keep doing this to myself? Why do I keep making this mistake over and over and over? That's reason. But he didn't stop there because if you just reason with yourself, you are just joining a debating society. He took the next step. He resolved. He committed himself. He brought his will into play. He said, because of all of this, I will arise. This is so important. Because, you know, many times we know what is wrong, but we have no will to do anything about what is wrong. It's like a couple who are having problems in their marriage. One sleeps facing west, the other is facing east. In their minds, they all want to resolve the problem. Because none of them is happy. Husband is saying, I wish she would say something, then I'll respond. Wife is saying, I wish he would say something, and I'll respond. So all of them are wishing somebody will will for them. And so they keep lying east and west, east and west. And sometimes they go on for a day, and then a week, and then a month, and then three months, and then six months. And before then, a problem which started so innocently, a very small problem, has now become a very huge problem. And all because although you have reason in your heart that what you are doing is wrong, you haven't applied your will. Your will. And that's what this gentleman did. I will arise. I will do something about it. I'm not just thinking about it. I will do it. And it's so with every problem. You want to lose weight? You know that I need to lose weight? I don't like the way I'm growing. I don't like the way I'm becoming fat. I don't like it. I look at myself in the mirror. I say, what is this, this thing doing here? What is this thing doing here? You hold your stomach and it's like jelly. What is this thing doing? What is this thing doing? I don't like this. I don't like it. Yeah, you have done first one and two realization, reason. Now you need resolve. I will. I will. He said, I will arise. I will go back to my father. I'm not waiting for daddy to call me. I'm not waiting for my father to send servants to look for me. I'm going to take the initiative because I left by myself. I have to go back by myself. I will do it. But that's not enough. Because sometimes you say, I will do it. I will do it. I will do it. I will do it January. I will do it February. I will do it March. Before you realize it's November. And you say, okay, last month, I will do it, I will do it, I will do it. Then you didn't do it. Okay, next year is coming. It's a new season. It's a new, <laughs> it's a new day. Fresh anointing coming my way. It's a new season. Then you start, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will, and end not doing it. So you have to realize it. You have to think about a reason. You have to resolve. But the fourth one is the clincher, the return. He acted. He acted. He says, the passage says, and he returned. He went back by himself. He left the father by himself and he returned by himself. This return journey is a it must have been probably the toughest journey for this young man. I don't know what he said when he was leaving. 
But normally when people are doing this thing, they, they talk very bombastically. You will see me next year by this time. When I return to this house, you will see. It's like somebody who left Ghana, went to America to come and prove to all of us that he has prospered. Now life is whipping him bad. But he can't come back because he promised the next time we see him he'll be in a high level. So he says, I'll stay more. I will stay more. So he stays and stays as if long stay will change your situation. Just gets worse and worse and worse. Returning is always tough. And can you imagine what this guy is thinking? He's returning with shame. Such disgrace. He's smelling of pigs. He's returning with guilt. He knows he's messed up his life. He's returning with fear. Doesn't know whether the father will accept him. Whether they will mock him. So every step from the pigsty to the father's house. It's a very difficult one. His head is heavy. Thoughts are going through his mind. But he has said, I hit rock bottom and no life will be worse than what I've experienced. I'm going back. And there are many people who need to return to God. There are people who need to return to church. There are people who need to return to their marriages. There are people who need to return to apologize to people. And it's a very tough thing. I don't want to put myself in that place. What if the person insults you when you are apologizing? What if he disgraces you? So this guy is going back to the father with a very heavy heart. He feels defeated. But he still goes. Restoration return is not always easy. Getting things to work as they used to be is not always easy. And for him, it was tough. And then he gets to the area where his father's house is. I'm sure the moment he entered the territory, he's now praying. If he's a Pentecostal charismatic, he's praying in tongues, praying the spirit. If he's forgotten to pray in tongues, he's now remembering. Praying, having all night prayer meetings, fasting. Seeking for God. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. Thank you for listening to Living Word. To interact with Pastor Mensah Otebil, like his page on Facebook. Follow him on Twitter at Mensah Otebil. Email otebil at centralgospel.com or call plus 233-302-688-000. Go!